Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to continue talking about Spanning Tree by taking a closer look at how Spanning Tree elects a root bridge on a network. Now with any election we need to be able to distinguish one candidate from another and Spanning Tree is no different. The tool Spanning Tree uses to do this to distinguish one switch from another is known as the bridge ID. Now every switch participating in Spanning Tree has a bridge ID. This is an 8-byte value and it's made up of two parts. The first part of the bridge ID is known as the priority value. It's two bytes long and by default it has a value of 32768. Now keep in mind this value is configurable meaning we can change it if we want to and later on we'll see how changing it can affect the overall process of electing a root bridge. But for now let's just keep it simple. The second part of the bridge ID is known as the system ID and this is six bytes long and this value is based upon the MAC address of the switch. As we know every device on an Ethernet network has a unique MAC address and switches are no different. So the system ID is based upon that particular value. When, when we combine these two together, the priority and the system ID, we have a bridge ID. Okay, so that's the first bit of information about spanning tree, how we identify each switch on the network. Now let's re revisit something we talked about in the last tutorial, the BPDU. Now as you recall, the BPDU is used to exchange information between switches running spanning tree on a network. So let's dive into that a little bit deeper and see what's inside each BPDU. There's a couple bits of information. Some of the detail is, is beyond the scope of our tutorial. However, what we can look at are the most important aspects. So here are a few of them. Inside each BPDU, you'll find the bridge ID of the source switch, meaning the switch that just created this BPDU and sent it on the network, it's going to put its own bridge ID in there. So if switch A were to create a BPDU, it would put its own bridge ID in the BPDU. Okay, so that's the first bit of interesting information. The second bit of interesting information is the bridge ID of the root bridge. Now, switch A is going to believe that somebody on the network is the root bridge. So whoever that other switch is, or maybe it, it believes it itself is the root bridge, switch A will put that value in the BPDU as well. Now the third bit of interesting information in the BPDU is the cost to reach the root bridge. So if switch A says, okay, I believe switch B is the, is the root bridge, not only am I, am I going to give you switch B's bridge ID, but I'm also going to tell you my path cost in order to get there. And that will help any other switch determine their own path cost. Okay, so there are a few more fields in the BPDU, but these are the most interesting ones to us as it pertains to electing a root bridge in spanning tree. Okay, so now let's put this all together and see, see the whole process in action. Okay, here's our sample network, and let's start off by looking at the values of the bridge IDs for each switch. We're going to use the default value for the priority portion, so they're all the same, 32768. The next portion is the MAC address, and obviously that's a unique value. So we combine these for each switch, and we have the bridge ID. So before we can elect a winner, let's first understand two rules about the election process, or just two facts. The first one is, Every switch believes it is the root bridge at the beginning of the election process. And the reason why that is, is that they haven't had a chance to exchange information yet. So they don't know any better. They have to believe somebody's the root, so why not themselves? Because they only know about their own values. Each switch only knows about its own priority and its own MAC address. Okay, so in the very beginning, switches A, B, and C, they all think they're the boss. That's the first thing. Now once they start exchanging information, that drastically changes. Now the rule as to who becomes the ultimate boss, the root bridge, is very simple. And that is, the switch with the lowest bridge ID becomes the root bridge. Okay, the lowest bridge ID becomes the root bridge. So, if switch A and B were to exchange BPDUs, 
they would first look at each other's priority value. And here, it's the same. It's the default. So they can't determine a winner based on that alone. Now this is why the bridge ID is, is well constructed because in the event of a tie you can always fall back to the MAC address. So that's what they'll do. Okay, our priorities are the same. Let's compare our MAC addresses. And the, it's the same thing here. The lower of the two values will be the winner. So MAC address all threes for switch A is higher than the MAC address of all twos for switch B. And so switch B would win that election and switch A would no longer believe it was the root bridge. In fact, it would go ahead and say, ah, I have received superior information from switch B. I now know that switch B is the root bridge. And so from that point on, all of the BPDUs that switch A sends out it'll still have the source uh, bridge ID because it has to have that of switch A but instead of listing itself as the root bridge it will now list switch B okay and so this process will keep happening between each of the switches on the network until an ultimate winner is found this is pretty much the, the process of elimination so now that switch A knows that switch B has a better value, at the same time or shortly thereafter, B and C would start switching information via BPDUs, and also A and C would do the same thing. Ultimately, if you compare B and C, you can see they have the same priority values as well. However, if you compare the two MAC addresses, switch C has the lower MAC address, and ultimately it would win the election out of the three switches. Okay, so switch C ultimately has the lowest bridge ID. It is now our root bridge and switches A and B would reflect that same root bridge information in their BPDUs. And if there were more switches on this network, the same thing would happen uh, for all of them until they are all agree, agreed upon the fact that switch C had the best bridge ID and it is the root. Now I did mention earlier that the priority value is configurable. So let's see what happens when we manually adjust it. Let's say we really wanted switch A to become the root switch. So we configured a default value of 8192. Now in the election process Whenever switch A and switch B or switch A and switch C would compare BPDU values, switch A would win and ultimately become our root bridge of this network. The reason being is the priority value is compared first in the bridge IDs. So as soon as you have a winner based on priority, the election's over. You don't have to go to the MAC address. So here, 8192 is lower than both of the other two default values, and switch A would win pretty easily. And this brings up a good point. Usually in, in networks, we want to choose the root bridge. If you leave it up to election, the election process, you're not always sure who's going to become the root bridge. And that could be bad. Maybe the the switch which has you know the worst performance on the network or is positioned in the least optimal position on the network becomes the root bridge and that could ultimately uh, create a suboptimal traffic flow on your network the optimizing design aspects of, of spanning tree are a little bit outside of the scope of these beginner tutorials but keep in mind uh, the good rule of thumb is you want to choose uh, who the winner of that election is going to be. You're essentially fixing the election and that's a good thing because we'll always know who that root bridge is going to be. Okay, let's summarize what we covered. We now know that there is a bridge ID and this is used in the election process to find the root bridge. The bridge ID is made up of two parts, the priority value and the MAC address and it's a unique value so we're always guaranteed to find a winner in the election process. Then we took a look at the BPDU and specifically what's inside of it that is very interesting for the election process. We now know that there is the source bridge, bridge ID. 
We also know that we have the root bridge ID that the source bridge believes is the root at the time. And then finally, we have the path cost of the source bridge to the root bridge. That kind of sounds like a riddle because there's so many instances of the word bridge. But if it's at all confusing, just rewind a little bit and take a look at that section again. Finally, we know that in the election process, lower is better. So the lower bridge ID is the better bridge ID. And we also know that in the beginning, all bridges believe that they are the, they are the root bridge. And when it comes to fine tuning the election process, we can configure the priority value, which gives us the ability to dictate which bridge will become the root bridge. And from a design perspective, that's an advantage. Okay, so be sure to check out the next tutorial in this series, which covers how Spanning Tree adapts to network failures. Okay, so that's it. That is the Spanning Tree Root Bridge election process. Thanks for watching.